So I use Google Drive every day, but I use a paid version and we're going to talk about what I get and why I pay for it. Uh, on the left-hand side of your screen is a free account. It's a personal Google account. And on the right-hand side of the screen is a G Suite account. So first let's start on the left. You just have uh, the basics where you have my drive and inside of that are the files and the folders that you use. And you can share files in both types of Google Drive and you also have the recent, the start and the trash. So those are basics that both the personal account and the paid G Suite account have. And so now let's spend some time talking about the extras that you get with the G Suite account. The first thing that we're going to do, and I'll have a link to this page in the description, is we're going to talk about the three different levels of G Suite, and they'll give you different abilities and things that you can use inside of Google Drive. The first thing that you'll notice is that um, the basic tier gives you 30 gigabytes, and business and enterprise give you unlimited. There's some qualifications for what's considered unlimited, which you can uh, look into, but it's you're gonna have a hard time filling it up. And then when you scroll down, and we look at the differences between the three. There's two differences. One of them is not listed on here. One of them is that you get priority drive and workspaces, which we'll talk about in one second. And the other difference is when you get to the second and third tiers of G Suite, you'll have um, team drives. So the G Suite account that we're gonna look at Google Drive inside of right now is on the second tier. It's a business tier, so we'll, we'll have all of the enhancements. And on the left-hand side, you'll notice this priority and the shared drives are not in a personal account. So that's what we're going to be talking about right now. These shared drives are what comes with the second plan, uh, but all G Suite accounts will have priority. So let's left click on priority. So if you do decide that you're interested in G Suite and you're in the US or Canada, I can get an affiliate discount for you if you contact me. Um, the information is in the description below. Just send me an email or send me a tweet and I'll send you back some codes. And what Priority is doing is two things here. Is one, it's using AI to guess which uh, files I want to use. So I guess I use these a lot and it thinks that uh, it wants to serve them up at the top um, for me to take a look at. So there's not much to talk about there. It is what it is and you may find that useful. And then the a little bit more dynamic feature is called workspaces. And what these do is uh, this allows you to create collections of files that have nothing to do with the folders that they're in. So they're completely independent of the folders and you can put them in, uh, let's say if you have your folders based on subject, uh, you can do uh, workspaces based on just kind of stage of the workflow. So I have some examples here. I have, um, you know, if I'm making a video on Google Drive, let's say, I might create a folder called Google Drive and maybe Google Drive paid versus free. Um, but I'm also planning this video when I'm coming up with it. And I could create a workspace called planning and put the files in there that are specific to only planning videos, but these files could be saved anywhere within Google Drive. Um, you can't put folders in these at this point, uh, but there are some more things that you can do with it. So if you left click on view workspace, it will expand it and you can add files. And when you left click on these three dots, this is kind of your typical uh, file menu that you'll get when you right click on anything uh, with the addition of uh, you can add it to another workspace. So these files can live in multiple workspaces at one time. You can rename the workspace, you can hide it. So that would just put it down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, see in the bottom left-hand corner here where it says hidden workspaces, where you can remove it. So when you remove it, the files stay there. They're still in Google Drive, but they're not organized in one of these workspaces. So we'll click done. That kind of covers the workspaces. It's a pretty handy feature. I kind of think of it as tags almost. Uh, so you would tag files with wrap up videos, right? But, but here it just allows you to put them into a workspace. Okay. And another big thing that a paid account for Google drive has is if you go on the left hand side, come down three, there's something called shared drives and shared drives offer a space where you can create a shared drive. So let's just look at uh, the one I did called project planning. We'll actually come up here and right click on it. And what you can do, you could think of this as kind of a traditional server and a drive that you have at your company. 
where multiple people can access it. So you can come down to manage members and I'll left click on this and I have myself set up and one other person. And each of these people can have their privileges controlled. So you see that these two privilege levels are different and there are several of them that are available. So the top one means that you can manage all the content and you can manage who can access it. The second one would be that you can just manage the content and then you can have even lower levels as well. So you can just add or edit files or you can come in and comment or just view. So those are the ways that you can control who can access these drives and what they can do. And the other item that we can look at is called shared drive settings. And this can control it not on a individual level, but on an entire uh, level just with the settings. So you can say, yeah, I wanna be able to share it outside of my organization. You can turn that on or off. You can share it with specific people and you can allow people or not to download, copy, and print the files. Let's look inside uh, this other one I created called videos. And just to show you, you can also create folders inside of your shared drives. Now you would still control the access at the shared drive level, not at the folder level. So if you have, say the accounting department is uh, certain people and marketing departments, other people, uh, I would make these both shared drives and not nest them inside of another one. Because if you right click on these, you don't have the same settings to control who accesses them. Make these shared drives in and of themselves. We'll come back to shared drives. And when you use Google Drive on a desktop or a laptop, you have the option to install something called Backup and Sync, which keeps uh, local copies of your files and you can access them through your File Explorer. But when you're using G Suite, you have the choice between Google Backup and Sync and Google Drive File Stream. So I'm going to show you File Stream in a second, but just as an overview, it will allow you to see those shared drives that we just went over, which could be really big if you're working in a larger organization and sharing files amongst a team. And another thing that it does is it doesn't sync all of the files to your computer. So if you have terabytes of files, corporate files and you don't have to use most of them. Drive file stream will let you see them, but you don't have to sync them. We'll talk about that in a second. And it also gives you extended capabilities in working with uh, Microsoft products. But be careful because it doesn't allow you to sync other folders. If, if you like to sync your desktop with Google Backup and Sync, you don't have that option with Drive file stream. It functions much more like a traditional shared drive. So let's look at the instance that I have running on my computer. I brought up uh, the Windows File Explorer. And you can see in the address bar, let me uh, left click on this PC. It just makes it look like a map drive. So Google Drive file stream is functioning as a G drive. You can change that letter if you need to. Left click on it and then you see my drive, which you'll recognize this, right? This is just what you would see in backup and sync also. If you drill down into one of these, these are your files and you can work with them like they're on your computer. But with Drive file stream, these aren't actually on my computer. Now, if you have a good internet connection, you won't even notice, but if you're going offline, you would have to do something like select the files that you're going to use and choose available offline. You could go up a few levels and choose to do that here, available offline as well. So you can also share it out from Drive file stream by left clicking on that. Uh, but those options aren't different from backup and sync. So we're just talking about what makes this unique. So let's go back up to drive file stream. And this is what we had talked about before. So the shared drives are here and you can save files to them just like it's a server. So the project planning, will go into that. There's that file. You can add, modify, or delete files to this using drive file stream. So those are the main differences between the free Google Drive and the G Suite paid versions of Google Drive. Um, also, if you pay for G Suite, you'll get Gmail, you'll get the calendar, and you'll get all sorts of other enterprise productivity apps that are meant to work together in an organization. And you can share those with everyone in the same domain. So up next, we're gonna dive really deep into Google Drive and look at all the attributes of it in this full tutorial. See you in there.